I just knocked out a five-time UFC champion and embarrassed your whole company. And please, please let me get Kamaru Usman. Please let me get Diaz. Please let me get Masvidal. Please let me get McGregor. Because I'm going to embarrass them too. I promise you that, Dana. I promise you that. Rage. Now, defined as violent, uncontrollable anger. That was the old definition anyway. As of August 29th of 2021, Rage is defined as watching Tyron Woodley cosplaying as a statue wearing short shorts during his fight with Jake Paul. August 30th of that same year blew Black Friday out of the water with the amount of electronics sold due to people punching their screens in frustration. And how could they not? I mean, only two years prior, Tyron was the UFC welterweight champion and fanboys of the sport were actively going back and forth with often not so civil discussions about whether or not he was superior to the legendary UFC welterweight king, George St. Pierre. And it's funny, because when that was going on, Tyron's striking prowess was often the deciding factor in people saying that he could beat George. The guy knocked out Robbie Lawler. Darren Till gave Stephen Wonderboy Thompson all he could handle on the feet. Hell, had even been training out of the wildcard boxing gym since 2008. That's Manny Pacquiao's gym, Freddie Roach, come on, legendary shit. We could understand Ben Askren losing to Jake Paul, that was fine. Askren is the worst striker in the history of mixed martial arts by a very wide margin. If somebody told me that he got knocked out on the street by a regular person without any previous training, I wouldn't even question it. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Ben Askren's striking is a meme. He's an anomaly. He was supposed to get his ass kicked. I even go as far as saying that in my own personal opinion, most YouTubers would beat Ben Askren in a boxing match. Seriously, he's that bad. Without ever seeing him even wearing a pair of boxing gloves, I can confidently say that Mr. Beast would trash Ben Askren in the ring. So yeah, that was okay. Totally understandable. But when Woodley offered to step in, Man, there was no way that Jake wouldn't be getting knocked out. I mean, that's what Woodley was known for, right? How could a guy that's been at the highest peaks of combat sports possibly lose to a YouTube kid that was getting his face bloodied by KSI's brother just a couple of years prior? Surely, Jake Paul had lost his mind. He was nuts. He knew who Tyron was, after all. If my memory serves me correctly, he even asked Woodley to train him around 2018 or so. I mean, sure, Tyron has been on a losing streak lately, but that was against top welterweights. Man, just five months prior, he almost knocked out Vicente Luque, one of the top strikers in the UFC's welterweight division. So what in the fuck did we see on August 29th? Let's forget that he even lost for just a second. The guy didn't even look like he ever sparred. Not leading up to the fight, I mean literally ever. What was that stance? Who taught him his fundamentals? What happened to the decade plus he spent at the wildcard gym? I've never seen Manny Pacquiao look like an upside down slingshot in the ring. So what just, why, how? I'm honestly curious as to what he was doing at the gym. I mean, a decade of even just standing around and observing people spar would have had him looking better. He got thoroughly outboxed and the one moment he did manage to have in the fight, he never even tried to capitalize on, and people say that it was because he was simply trying to carry Jake and secure a rematch, but that's cope. The actual truth is, Tyron Woodley is a terrible boxer, and the fact that he was able to knock out several top strikers in the UFC just makes it seem like the striking level in the UFC's welterweight division might not be that high. Look, don't beat me up over this or anything, I'm a fan of the sport, which is why this is hard to admit, but seriously. And I get it, the striking is different in MMA, threat of the takedown, blah blah blah, right, I hear you. But this is still a professional fighter. I don't think anyone would expect the, for example, professional kickboxer who was a champion just two years prior to lose a boxing match to Jake Paul. Different sport or not. I feel like the embarrassment level of Tyron's first loss to Jake Paul was extremely understated. People blamed it on him being too old, which... Makes no sense because he wasn't too old to rock Vicente Luque that same year. Some said he was too small, which again makes zero sense since Tyron has claimed to walk around at over 200 pounds, same as Jake. What, because he's a couple of inches shorter? He was shorter than all of his opponents throughout his career. He's a short guy, but he's far from small. Jake Paul is also taller than Mike Tyson, so is Mike Tyson smaller than him too? No, we have to face the music, boys. Tyron Woodley single-handedly embarrassed the whole sport of mixed martial arts. But that wasn't enough for Tyron, after all. 
why just embarrass yourself as a competitor when you can also embarrass yourself as a man? Yeah, I'm talking about him begging Jake Paul for a rematch. I mean, you could see the money-hungry sparkle in his eye in that post-fight interview. Oh, Mr. Paul, thank you so very much for the payday, but may I please have another? I'll do anything. I'll get the tattoo I said I would never get. Yup, your name on my body. Mm -hmm. Just please give me more money. I'm surprised I didn't offer him a book herb for his book. <clears throat> Look, all I'm trying to say is that was so embarrassing that I'm currently embarrassed to admit that I used to actually be a fan of Woodley. I thought he was a great fighter, rooted for him, and I can't lie, I feel kind of stupid in hindsight. But as we all know, even that wasn't enough for Tyrant. No, no, he had to take it a step further and leave absolutely no doubt in the eyes of spectators. Some fans were able to move past his first loss with time after all, and in Tyrant's world, that's just unacceptable. Why lose to a YouTuber on points when you can be on the receiving end of one of the most brutal knockouts ever? So yeah, the guy who was a multiple time welterweight champion in the premier organization of mixed martial arts who apparently trained out of the wildcard gym for years and years and was known for knocking people out so much that he tried to make a rap career out of it with songs like I'll Beat Your Ass got absolutely flatlined by a YouTuber. And for what? A payday? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I doubt that one or two million dollars was worth tanking your brand and greatly diminishing any future potential for making money. I mean, who's gonna listen to fighting expert Tyron now that he got knocked out by Jake Paul? Who's gonna take the tough guy rap seriously? Honestly, will anyone even wanna watch him fight in MMA if he chooses to go that route? Any future opportunity built around the idea of him being a real life tough guy will be immediately negated by a simple, he's not tough, he got knocked out by Jay Paul. But you know, in a twisted way, Tyron got exactly what he was looking for. He always wanted to be a celebrity first and fighter second, and now he is. He's officially a meme. So congrats, I suppose. Hope the little bit of cash was worth making the sport that made you famous look like a joke, killing any future potential for earning money off your image, and most importantly, losing your dig- <laughs> who am I kidding? This is a man that got a tattoo of another man's name for a paycheck. What dignity. So I guess I'll end this with, the UFC should really consider paying their fighters better. <laughs>